In the second part of subtopic 2.2, we're going to start with this science understanding. The position of an equilibrium in a chemical system at a given temperature can be indicated by a constant Kc related to the concentrations of reactants and products. We're actually focusing on this point in particular, where we need to undertake calculations involving Kc and initial n or equilibrium quantities of reactants and products for homogeneous equilibrium systems. In the first part of 2.2, I introduced to you this idea that for a general reaction, we can write uh, an expression for the equilibrium constant as shown below. And I mentioned that the magnitude of Kc is a measure of the yield, but we didn't quite uh, look at that in any further detail. So in terms of the magnitude of Kc, what we can say is that if the Kc value equals a value of 1, that neither reactants nor products are actually favoured. In the second scenario, if the Kc value is greater than 1, then we can say that the products are favoured. That's just because the top part of our expression includes the concentration of products. So this must be greater than the concentration of our reactants, so that Kc is greater than 1. This means we've got a high ratio of products to reactants, and we can say that equilibrium lies to the right to favour the products. Our last scenario is when the Kc value is less than 1. This means that the reactants are favoured. This means we've got a low ratio of products to reactants, and therefore equilibrium lies to the left. One other thing to consider is that the magnitude of Kc depends on temperature. And to look at this, we're going to consider one reaction, but at different temperatures. So we've got the production of hydrogen iodide here. We're given a value for its enthalpy change as a negative value. At 25 degrees Celsius, our Kc value is 8 times 10 to the power of 2. 500 degrees Celsius, Kc is equal to 5 times 10 to the power of 1. And 800 degrees Celsius, Kc is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 1. From this, we can see that the Kc value seems to decrease as the temperature increases. In terms of why this occurs, we're going to cover that in a later video that talks about Le Chatelier's principle. Now to look at the calculations involving Kc, we're going to work through three examples and this will kind of increase in complexity. So let's start off with a very direct one, example one. For the reaction given below, we need to calculate the Kc value given the equilibrium concentrations as shown below. So given this information, we can firstly write an equilibrium expression for this reaction. So the Kc value would be equal to the concentration of N2O4 all squared divided by the concentration of N2O squared multiplied by the concentration of O2 cubed. We can then just substitute our values in for the equilibrium concentrations. So based on the early information, this is it here. And if we put that into our calculator, we should get a value of 89.2 to 3 sig figs. What this value tells us is that the equilibrium reaction heavily favours the product side because this value is quite significantly greater than 1. For example, question 2, we've got a different reaction here. So CO2 plus N2 going to produce CO and NO. We're given a Kc value in this case of 3.71 times 10 to the power of 2. We're given the equilibrium concentrations of almost all of our reactants and products. So we've got CO2, N2 and NO. But we need to calculate the concentration of carbon monoxide at equilibrium given this information. To do so, we're going to write our equilibrium expression. So Kc, and we were given the value here, this is equal to the concentration of NO squared multiplied by CO squared divided by the concentration of CO2 squared multiplied by the concentration of N2. What we're going to do then is rearrange the equation so that we can isolate that term CO squared and then we'll work with that a little bit later. So let's rearrange that now, and we can see that concentration of CO squared would be equal to 3.71 times 10 to the power of 2, multiplied by CO2 squared, multiplied by N2, all divided by the concentration of NO squared. We can substitute in our values from the earlier information, end up with a value of about 0.167, and you can check that yourself. From that, we should then be able to solve for the concentration of carbon monoxide 
Given that we've got a square of it, we can take the inverse operation. And so we can then work out that the square root of this answer will give us the concentration for carbon monoxide. And that should give us a value roughly of 0 0.408 moles per litre to three sig figs. For the third and final example, we're going to be looking at a method which I call the MICE method. And what it is used for is when not all equilibrium concentrations are known. And in this case, you don't actually know what the KC value is and something that we need to work out. This depends on using the mole ratios of reactants and products. So knowing how the amounts of reactants and products change when a system reaches equilibrium. Here is our example question here. So for this reaction, H2 plus I2 goes to produce two lots of HI. We've got here some hydrogen and iodine are admitted to a closed container and allowed to equilibrate. That means to reach equilibrium. The initial concentration of a H2 and I2 are 2.5 times 10 to the minus 2 and 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2 molar respectively. The question then is calculate Kc if the equilibrium concentration of Hi is 3.14 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. This information is just summarized in this slide here. So it's just taking all those pieces of data and just summarizing it on that one slide. So we're going to use this and transfer it into what we call a mice table. And this mice table would look something like this. So we've got the reaction um, as shown here. And what I've done is I've just substituted any information that I've been given. Um, beforehand though, we've got uh, the mole ratio of our reactants and products. So that's the M there. You can see the MICE acronym being used here. And I standing for the initial concentration or the initial number of moles. Uh, C being the change in the number of moles or concentration and E being the concentration or number of moles at equilibrium. So we were given the concentration of both of our reactants at the start of the reaction, as shown here. We were also told that the concentration of our product HI was 0 0.0314 moles per litre. So I've just placed that into there. And from this, it's just a matter of knowing how to solve for certain components. So we know, for example, that there was no product to begin with at the start of this reaction. So we know that the initial concentration for our product is zero. We can calculate the change, and this is really the key part of the MICE table, is working out the change and how the reactant's products actually change in concentration. So to go from zero to 0 0.0314 moles per litre, this would have meant that the product's concentration would have had to increase by 0 0.0314 moles per litre. And in order to use this to work out how the reactants change, we have to consider the mole ratio of reactants and products. We can see that there is one H2 reacting with one I2 to produce two lots of HI. What this tells us is that the uh, number of moles or the concentration of our product is going to increase by twice the amount or two times the amount that the concentration or amount of H2 and I2 are used up as the system reaches equilibrium. So if it has increased by 0 0.0314, then we know that these reactants are going to decrease by half that amount. So a half of 0 0.0314 would mean that the concentration firstly for I2 will decrease by half that, which is 0 0.0157. And if we just do a simple subtraction here, then we should end up with a concentration of 0 0.0023. Over here for H2, we can see it's going to decrease by the same amount, given that it's a uh, 1 to 2 ratio between the reactants and products. So it decreases by the same amount. And so we just subtract that from the initial concentration and we get a value of 0 0.0093 moles per litre. From this, we now have the equilibrium concentrations of all of our reactants and products. We can take the information from the previous table and insert it into our equilibrium expression. 
So our Kc value is equal to the concentration of Hi squared divided by the concentration of H2 multiplied by the concentration of I2. Using our concentrations we've determined, uh, it's given as this particular expression here. So if we substitute it into our calculator, we should get a value of 46. This is to two sig figs. Keep in mind that Kc values do not actually have any units assigned. And this magnitude of Kc tells me again that this reaction heavily favours the products once it reaches equilibrium. That concludes part two of subtopic 2.2. I'll see you guys in the next video.